Deutsche Welle, Germany's me leading media development organization. So if you're interested in a five-minute talk, debate with Geraldine de Bastion and Mark Belinsky from uh, New York City, so then come closer and follow this debate uh, during the lunch break. Um, Mark Belinsky is co-director of Digital Democracy, a New York-based NGO, and Geraldine de Bastion is a former development consultant for German Cooperation Agency and now consultant with New Thinking Communication in Berlin and also uh, co-founder of Digital Society, which is a spe special NGO quite recently. And the topic we are discussing now is, is Internet creating an elitist democracy somehow? Geraldine, I would like to ask you first, how many people in Africa have access to Internet? Uh, too few. Too few, although, uh, of course, as we all know, due to the rise of mobile telephony and explosion of mobile phone usage in Africa that we've all followed, more and more people are gaining access, also, also through other shared models of use, for instance, public access points. So, but that means that uh, only few people, but urban people, more educated people have access to internet in general in developing countries. Of course, there's a, there's a huge rural and urban divide. People in uh, capital cities tend to have, of course, a much better infrastructure accessible to them than people living in rural communities. Overall, I think uh, connectivity ranges around 10% um, on the whole of the country, but then we have huge contrasts between countries, say between Nigeria for the, uh, on the one hand, which is a country that is uh, caught up significantly in the last years, especially in urban areas or countries like Ethiopia, with, uh, which still have frighteningly low bandwidths. The, the internet with all its communication and networking possibilities, obviously, and that is common sense, is providing more or less to democracy all over the world. Do you agree on that thesis? The, the question is really what internet people have access to. And what is democracy? And, and what is democracy? And so tell us. <laughs> in five minutes. <laughs> in, in five minutes. No, uh, in two minutes we have to step forward. Correct? Democracy is really f being able to have citizens interact with governments more easily as well as to interact amongst themselves more easily. And it's becoming increasingly possible through mobile technologies for people to connect to each other. However, if you look at how many people and how many companies actually don't have mobile-based websites, you can start to see groups being shut out. And so it's less of a rural-urban divide, but it's much more the responsibility of governments and of corporations to start providing access to the people who otherwise are looking for that content. Okay, that is the perspective from technology side. Everything is possible. Now from user side, is everybody able to use the possibilities on it. Of course, the whole capacity question and media education, being media savvy and ready to use these technologies is the other huge issue, apart from the physical connectivity that we need to look at. And we've actually been having discussions about that just now in the break time, because um, many of the practitioners here feel that there's still so much work to be done in really giving especially marginalized communities and, um, and people who might not have experienced the best education access to not only be able to physically reach, but to really use these tools and add content and join the conversation. So for development of democracy, of societies, the digital divide, which you say is a big problem that we have to solve? Uh, yes, it's definitely still a big challenge and, and there, I think there need to be more programs that really look at uh, media education from early, uh, early education onwards, but as a, as a lifelong learning process. Let's sum up. Does that mean that in the future maybe we have a, a global media, mediatized and networked uh, young, younger generation globally, which is interconnected by everything what is possible, iPad, iPhone, everything, which talk to each other, but leaving out the whole world because the whole world is not connected, not participating in political processes, not able to attend all this, this communication. What does that mean for democracy? I think that the iPad, iPhone conversation is actually a really complicated one where these are not free and open source tools. People do not feel the trust in these technologies where they can translate them into their own languages. They can go in, they can tweak 
what their own privacy settings are, their security settings are. There's not that level of trust. And at the same time, you have countries like Bangladesh, which understand the digital divide much more effectively. My cell phone there works better than it works in New York. And in the rural communities... But it is working for you. It is working for, for, for others, uh, educated, uh, richer people in Bangladesh. But the, how, that, what does that mean for 200 million people out in the rural areas? Even for uh, e-commerce, you have people who can purchase 40 goats in rural Bangladesh. And this is an extremely popular SMS-based system. Um, where people have access in new ways that was never possible before. And I think that's a really important point because it's not just about empowering people to consume, but empowering people to create, to create their own local solutions for their local project problems. And we've seen so many really inspiring, I think, also developments come out of developing countries, like the one you've just mentioned, or initiatives coming from Africa in the last years, uh, in the, for instance, in the mobile payment area. So, but does it mean that we have to bring people to the new technologies in, in order to enable them for, to development? Or is the new technology itself providing development to the people? Go first. Pe people, people are showing that they're willing to pay for communications technologies before food. And that is a stunning and, and terrifying idea, but it's a reality. And we need to confront the issue with putting good substance in front of them. Facebook Zero is taking Africa by storm, where that is a free connection to the internet, but it's a very small slice of the internet that's not information, that's not media, that's not connecting them to their mm -hmm. officials. Okay. And also for Western worlds, uh, just to mention a recent study conducted by Berkeley University in California, uh, and also done research over the past 10 years to find that, and I think this is well known though, that it's only a small percentage of the people that use the internet that actually input that like write Wikipedia articles or comment on different things and and create the content that's out there and um, and I think like I said a lot has to be done in terms of providing education providing the means for people to uh, work with these technologies in our societies as well as in developing countries thank you very much Geraldine de Bastion media consultant and Mark Belinsky from digital democracy from uh, New York thank you